Okay, I think that's all right. <laughs> how are you doing? How are you doing? Good, alhamdulillah, how are you? How was your day? Good, good, it's just a crazy day, but I can hear myself. I can hear myself. It's like mm. echoing. It's like echoing. Um, let me put some headphones in, maybe that'll be easier. Okay. Okay, let's see. Whoever's on, Whoever's so on so and let us know where you're, let us know where you're tuning in from. Tuning in from. that um yeah i can't hear myself anymore <laughs> you don't okay good yeah. okay perfect awesome <laughs> <laughs> is your son down for the next cool yeah he is it's eight it's eight thirty here okay. and um he is two and a half now so he has been skipping naps usually mm -hmm. And so then it, it's a little easier for him to rest, like, around this time. So it made it a lot easier to do the live now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Evenings are easier, but I don't know. Somehow it's, like, bedtime, dinner time. <laughs> yeah. Right now, but it's okay. They're, they're watching something. They didn't get to watch it. Okay. Today, so it's okay. So, okay. Anyway. Okay. So, um, you know, we're here, in, alhamdulillah, like, inshallah, to talk about um, what... Sabrina does um, mm -hmm. and about to talk about because this topic is very like not a lot of people don't know what it is and mm -hmm. some people think like what is that like why would you do that yeah or, like you know how is that going to help you or you know a lot of people don't know about it um, so mm -hmm. I just thought it would be good to talk about it especially when how it can correlate to like how it will help moms postpartum and then also, mm -hmm. yep. just in general, postpartum, even if it's immediate postpartum or like later, like, mm -hmm. you know, I will talk about okay. my experience using your products as well later. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I just, maybe you can just talk a bit about like how, like how your journey was, like, how did you get into yeah. like doing this and like, yeah. I'm okay, so it's it funny because... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's funny that we're talking about postpartum care and vaginal steaming today because it's kind of around that time for me that I started to learn about vaginal steaming. Yeah. So basically, um, I like basically ever since I could remember with my period, it was always very painful. It was very irregular. I had a very hard time with it. Yeah. So um, after having our son, Ismail, I was, I think, I don't know. I think I was only um, like five months postpartum or something like that. But I started to remember like, oh, when my period does come back, um, what is that going to be like? And now that I have a baby, if it's really painful and if I'm struggling through it, then how am I going to take care of the baby at the same time? So I was like, I really need to find some help. And at the time, I just started um, my Ayur my program learning Ayurveda, which is a natural he healing science. So I was learning about like how to take care of yourself more. I was learning about that stuff, but I wanted to also learn more specifically into how to help women with their periods. And because I was like really looking for anything to help me out with for when my period would return after having the baby. Mm -hmm. So I started to read a book called uh, Moon Time um, by Lucy Pierce. And as I was reading that book, she talks a bit about vaginal steaming, but I just kind of read it. I read it and then I just I was like, oh, I don't even know how that could work. Like, how does someone have to be involved? Like, I was just really, I was kind of weirded out by it. Yeah. So I, I just, I just kind of like read it and then forgot about it. And um, my period did, did end up coming back and it was very uncomfortable. It was, again, like really painful and stuff like that. Um, so basically it was about a year after I was reading that book that I was, I, all of a sudden this thought came to my head of like vaginal steaming. Oh yeah. What was that? What was that about? So I started to look into it a little bit more and, um, my mom is from Somalia in East Africa. So I asked her like, do you know about this? And she said that she remembered hearing about it. So I was like, oh, this, it kind of, it felt so cool that I could possibly learn about something that like my ancestors did. Yeah. Um, and so 
Yeah, but I had no idea where to learn it from. I live in a small town in Wisconsin, so I was like, I, you know, there's nothing like that around here. So I just started making dua, and I was like, please guide me to somebody who um, can help me learn this. And it was so interesting, subhanAllah. But uh, it was like within that week that I was – Sorry, I have a little bug here. <laughs> um, it's like it's like climbing up the wall as I'm talking. Um, so so basically, um, what was I? What part was I at? <laughs> if you um, you mean um, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So I so it was that week I was listening to a podcast and um, I was like checking what other episodes she has. It's the Mega Mama podcast, and there was one about vaginal steaming. And I was like, oh my gosh! So I'm sitting there folding like however many loads of laundry I was doing, and I'm like listening to all of this stuff about vaginal steaming. And so it was with Kelly Garza, and she is the owner of Steamy Chick, which is basically like the leading. Um, She's like the leading like vaginal steam woman and she has a pro programs online. And I was like, oh, it was just like, it was amazing. It was like such a miracle to be able to find somebody who I could learn from. Yeah. And so I knew for sure I wanted to learn about it for myself to help myself with my menstrual cycle, but then also to integrate it into my Ayurvedic practice. And so I was like trying to, um, I was trying to just learn it to be, yeah, basically just to help myself, but then to help others as well. So through that, then my mission has kind of become to help more women find out about it, learn about it. And, um, and then from that journey, I've also been able to release herbal steam blends. So I actually sell the herbs that you use for it. I started um, just last month. I started selling the steam stools too. So it's been really fun and it's been amazing to see like how this can help women and then for me personally I've had a really great experience um, with seeing my menstrual cycle like I've never seen it before where it's it's regular without pain and that's that's super that's super drastic for me because it was very like to the point that it's okay <laughs> <Poor thing. laughs> so I'll just continue talking yeah, just if you continue want talking. Um, I'm sorry <laughs> that's okay so basically um through me trying to use steaming regularly i've i've okay, been able to regulate my cycle okay no problem so basically i've been able to regulate my cycle now and then i've also been able to um uh experience having a menstrual cycle or periods without pain and so like i was men mentioning before it was so 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 painful for me to the point that I would like get like super sick. I couldn't stand it. It would like my cramps would be so painful that I would faint or that I would throw up sometimes. So it was like super dramatic. So for me to now be able to say that I just had a period without any pain is like a, a miracle, you know? So alhamdulillah, it has done a lot for me. Um, and then in relation to postpartum healing, um, I actually didn't know about vaginal steaming during my postpartum time yeah. but i'm excited hopefully inshallah for the future to be able to uh, use it for myself with that okay how um how long did you um like try it out for before you saw um results for yourself so i was doing it for quite a while but the thing with that was that I was just kind of doing it whenever I didn't actually create like a set plan for myself. Yeah. So I was steaming for like over six months, but I would just kind of do it here and there. I didn't really pay attention to like what I needed and what type of steam schedule I needed. Um, and then finally I was like, you know what, if I really want, like I'm sharing about this stuff, but if I really want it to work for myself, I have to be strict about like steaming on certain days and making sure that I'm sticking to my steam plan. So when I was actually, actually able to focus on on um, on that it was like it was um three months of doing like my actual steam plan um that i was able to regulate and then also um have a pain-free period so it was about three cycles okay okay so that's not too yep. long then right that's a good um no. amount of time yeah so yeah i felt like it and it, that it could take like about at least three to four months to see some sort of yeah. change, yeah? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it can. And for me, it was like slowly. So each month it seemed a little bit better, a little bit better. And then I also started to integrate other things too. Like I started to do cardio. I started to um, take herbal teas. So it was kind of like a, like a, a team type thing. It was yeah. like a holistic approach. Yeah. But I noticed slowly over that time. And then by the third month, it, it was actually very, very, very different where okay. it was like I wasn't um, suffering anymore. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. Um, I mean, I, for me personally, I had heard about it, um, I think since, I'm pretty sure I heard about it before I got married. Um, mm-hmm. heard my parents, my mom talk about it. Um, and it seems to be something that they did in East Africa, because I'm also from East mm-hmm. Africa. So, um, oh, so yeah, they, um, I remember like when I was due with my um, first, my eldest Mm -hmm. my mom had come to visit and then um she was talking with my in-laws who are also from east africa and they were talking Mm -hmm. about how um like um one of um um the ladies was she's from sudan and then my mom's from Mm -hmm. kenya so like they were talking about how they would do it Mm -hmm. over there and Mm -hmm. um i don't know what they use exactly but they had special herbs and they were like we don't have the herbs or something but like we would need to Mm -hmm. stool and all of that stuff and get it ready and i Mm -hmm. was thinking like what talking about and what it was just embarrassing yeah. for me because my father yeah was there too it was just so weird like what are you guys talking about like you know like can we talk about this another time but but um, it was kind of part of their culture it is, yeah. like it sounds like it was, like it was a part of the culture and it was normal like you know and then it just never happened because i was um i had a c-section and then again i had a c-section so it was just something that never yeah. came up but then after mm-hmm. um I came across your profile some sometime in the last year was when I was like, Oh my yeah. God, this is a thing. Like, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> people do. And so that's when like, I started reading up more, reading more into it. And like, you know, I contacted mm-hmm. you and stuff. So, um, I'm yeah. really glad I did because, um, you know, I'm, I, I want to go into like the benefits and, and like, um, just examples um of how you would know like you know you actually do need it like what kind of period that you would be having or remember you were you would tell me about like post-birth yeah effects of what would happen to your body post-birth or your uterus post-birth and how that affects mm-hmm. your period and stuff so maybe we can talk about like you know how it can help you and why why it would help you um you know I, okay we about so how it you, but just in general like you know yeah so in general like outside of do you mean outside of the postpartum time or just okay so outside of the postpartum time there there can like it can help with tons of stuff basically it can help with like a very large variety of gynecological issues so it could be anything from like infections like chronic utis it could be like early menstrual cycles it could be cramps um, late menstrual cycles where people actually don't get their period or it, like skips months or it just comes later than like 31 days. Um, it could also be um, like other types of infections like bacterial vaginosis. Also things like endometriosis, PCOS, um, infertility. It's, it's really helpful for infertility mm-hmm. um, as well as fibroid cysts. So it's like tons and tons of stuff. And the reason why like it, it it kind of helps with like all of these things is because all of this stuff is happening in the uterus. So with steaming, the herbs and the herbal properties, the warmth from the steam is actually able to help to cleanse the uterus. And then also the herbs, like according to what herbs you choose to use, it can help strengthen the uterus or support the uterus or clean the uterus out. So it's just kind of like choosing the herbs according to what the person needs to have happen with, for their uter- uterus. Um, so it's so interesting because the benefits can be like very, very wide just according to what the person needs. So I usually say that um, a health, a standard healthy cycle, according to Kelly Garza, is a, men- uh, is a cycle where your period comes every 28 to 31 days. So that's kind of like the, the range of like a, um, a standard healthy cycle. And then um, the period should never have any types of discomfort. It shouldn't be uncomfortable, like, whatsoever. It shouldn't have cramps. You shouldn't have, like, 
um, you know, any types of negative, uh, in, like, uh, symptoms, I guess. And then another thing would be that the blood would just be red. Um, so the period would just be red. It wouldn't be like brown or black. Um, and there wouldn't be any clots in there. So if you're somebody who's dealing with anything like outside of that, like if your period comes, um, on day like 23 or if your period comes on day 35, you know, those are outside of like that standard healthy cycle. So steaming can be something really helpful. But another thing I love about it is that um, it can, like if somebody has a great cycle, a great period, it can still be something that you use just as like regular maintenance to just kind of help support your uterus. It's also great for creating like um, a bond or like a healthy relationship with that, like your pelvic space, that space in your body. Mm -hmm. And to me, I feel like that's something that's really important. Um, so it's like a great self-care um, like habit to use. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, um, that's pretty much it. So like if anybody falls outside of that category of, um, you know, like if you have clots or if you have brown, brown bleeding, if, if you deal with spotting, all those different types of things, um, that steaming could be something that may be able to help you. Yeah. And that's so common. Those, those, all those things that you mentioned are so yeah. common, like the, the spotting, the, um, mm -hmm. the brown, um, and then yep. especially like just the um, being periods being late or periods being too early. Mm -hmm. It's fluctuating mm -hmm. uh, depending on our lifestyle or stress mm -hmm. or exactly. It's, it's just so it, it's scary how common it is, you know, and after yeah. like having this conversation with you, like apart aside mm -hmm. from the live, it was, mm -hmm. it was, I was amazed at how like, like it's not normal like you know all my life I thought hey you know I, I get my period at the same time every month unless I'm really mm -hmm. stressed out or traveling or I'm pregnant I'm yeah. getting, gonna get mm -hmm. it at the same time but there right. were other issues you know like PMS mm -hmm. and all those other things yep. and, um, and those are not normal as you said like you know it, mm -hmm. it is it is made to seem like it's normal, right? I mean, like, yeah, you know, they say, it's yeah, so you sad. Know, the symptoms will be this, 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 this. But then, you know, like, there are people who don't experience that. Like, I, I do have a yeah. really good friend of mine who, who mm -hmm. will never experience any of that. She'll be like, oh, I just got my period. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you didn't have any cramps. You didn't have any, like, mm -hmm. things. You yeah. didn't have any emotional, like, you know, outbursts. Yeah. yeah I didn't. Yeah, like, exactly. Are you kidding me? That's so good. Yeah. I know exactly. And I didn't know that for the longest time. Like I thought I was like, like I was, I couldn't walk whenever I had my period because it hurt so bad. So I thought that I was, that was normal. I heard like about an aunt or someone who who didn't have anything, any, any negative um, things with their period. And I thought like, Oh, that would be so cool. But for some reason I just thought like, I guess everyone is different. And for me, the way I am is that it's painful and that's not normal. And, uh, and so that's like, it's part of like, that's a big, part of what I try to share is that if you're dealing with anything uncomfortable, that's not how it's supposed to be at all. It's supposed to be just very easy, um, just where you may feel like uh, relaxing more, but not anything where you're like struggling or you're very uncomfortable, you know, nothing like that. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be like a like <laughs> dramatic experience yeah. for us, you know? Yeah. And there are people who like are stuck in bed that time of the month, they can't do know. anything and they're in so yeah. much pain or and um and i mean yeah. the reason why i also wanted to like got, talk to you about this um here is because once you have a baby and you become a mom yeah. this it becomes it's kind of like it aggravates mm -hmm. it more maybe not for everybody yeah. but it kind of for me personally and a lot of people i know the symptoms are more aggravated um once you have a baby i don't if anyone mm -hmm. is watching if you've had a baby or even if you haven't like tell us what you are like common like symptoms yeah. are like you know and and yeah let's have an open discussion about it but like i from what mm -hmm. i've heard is like after you have a baby it's either you know you get really heavy bleeding or um the, it's not regular mm -hmm. or then the pain could be really bad um mm -hmm. and then the other thing is yeah the symptoms like you instead of having pms for one or two days right before your period you could have it for mm -hmm. weeks before yeah. That's crazy. That's just like you're, if you're a mom and you're already dealing with like so much kids, exactly. And everything, having to deal with that stuff yeah. is not okay. Like it's 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 not yeah. it's not okay. It's just you know you want to make your life 
easier, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's crazy because, so for, for some people, they had this experience, like you said, where after they've had a baby, it's like, oh my gosh, my period is even worse. Like it comes back horrible. And part of the reason for that is because after having a baby, we don't, I mean, it's not part of our culture to do something like steaming where we support the uterus afterwards. So oftentimes what happens is, um, so basically one of the great benefits of steaming postpartum is to help clean out the uterus from the lochia, the after birth, mm -hmm. um, like the blood and anything that's in there. So if we, if our body is not able to completely cleanse that out on its own, since steaming and things like that is not really part of our culture here, um, then what happens is that there's some, there's still some backed up, um, of the lochia. You know, it did not all come out. The uterus did not clean out completely. So, and then usually what happens is if we're breastfeeding, stuff like that, the period doesn't really come back for quite a few months for some people. So it's super interesting because um, if there is a lot of old residue backed up there, like the old lochia backed up there, then when the period does come back, it comes back very painful because there's that old build up there and it needs to come out. So then the uterus is just trying to cramp it all out. And then on top of that, it may be brown because there's like old backed up um, backed up blood. Yeah. yeah, so exactly. So it'll just come out and it's dark. It doesn't feel healthy. It's painful because all of that old stuff has to come out. And, um, and it's difficult. And so then people will then feel like it's uh, their period came back really painful or it's much different, you know? Yeah. And that's, it's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's sad how normal that is, you know? Um, and it's also scary mm -hmm. how much we're not informed of that, you know? Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, if some um someone says, I think it's the hormonal upset of it all, birth, postpartum, mm -hmm. um, lack of skill yeah. Skin care. Yeah. So I mean, there's a, yeah, a lot definitely. of hormonal um part to play in mm -hmm. this, right? Um, exactly. You yep. mentioned um like steaming after uh, you have a baby. So how mm -hmm. soon would someone do that? Like, so it depends. So. For um, for some people, they're able to start steaming the day after having a baby because yeah, it's 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 interesting. But um, so what they would need to do is they would need to make sure that they're they are not bleeding anymore, like any heavier than they were the day before. So with that, then you're able to see that the uterus, the um, the arteries are closed. So then everything that's coming out is not fresh blood that's that's coming out, like the body's not um, bleeding out, but that is just cleaning out the uterus from the from the lochia. Um, so some people are able to do that. People who have had C-sections, they need to wait until after the six-week checkup okay. to make sure that the, stitch, the stitches are all um, healing well. Because with the steam, like as you're sitting there above the steam, the, the steam can reach that space where the stitches are. And you, yeah, you just don't really want to mess with that. So, um, But usually in most cultures, people will steam for 30 days in a row. Wow. So... Yeah, and so that's um, that's like one of the most common uh, things that people use steaming for is just postpartum healing. And um, so, yeah, so 30 days in a row would be the norm. And then that way, um, there's like tons of benefits with using steaming postpartum. So if you're doing it for that many days in a row after having a baby, it ends up helping with a lot of different things. And we can go into like the benefits and stuff too. But that's kind of like, that's kind of like um, the general guideline of, of when someone can start steaming after having a baby. That's amazing. 30 days. I mean, that would be mm -hmm. like that. I'm sure that that would be like life changing for them, right? If there's mm -hmm. other issues, like, do you think it could help um, with any like postpartum like hormonal issues, like in terms yeah. of like mm -hmm. you know postpartum yeah. depression or postpartum yes. um, just your body like recovering and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. think it could. Yeah, it can help a lot because um, so. One thing that I learned as well from Kelly Garza is that she has this idea that when a woman is steaming after having a baby, um, the steam is able to reach the uterus. And so it does have the potential to trigger. There's this um, connection between the uterus and the brain. So it does have the potential to trigger this um, like feeling of like joy and stuff from the oxytocin. And so when we have more of that happening, like after having the baby, that 
that's like the love hormone. And so it's able to help us feel good. We feel much more happy. We're not struggling. We're not feeling so stressed or pressured. And so it ends up, um, it ends up really helping with like the balancing of the hormones in that sense. And then it also just helps with like, like somebody, like how you, you read the comment that said that like the hormone are, the hormones are so just imbalanced. And it is the hormones. And then on top of that, it's just, um, like a full body, like, uh, imbalance that we go into after having a baby because we just spent nine months carrying a baby. The body's creating all this extra fl uh, blood, all this extra, you know, like fluids, everything like that. And so w after the baby's born and all of that comes out, the body is just kind of like, you could think of it in the sense that it's just kind of like drained mm -hmm. from, from going through all of that. Yeah. And so we really have to focus on restoring everything. And so steaming can be super helpful with not only like, you know, it helps with like the hormone aspect, but it can also help with healing um, other things like stitches, for example. Um, it can also help with um, like water retention and um, like swelling. And so then what, when we're able to get all of that out and flush all of that like extra uh, water um, and like the, the retention that people usually deal with, yeah. then we're able to lose weight quicker after like the baby weight, we're able to lose that a little quicker. And so it's like, it, it helps with so many different things. It can also help with hemorrhoids. So when you're <laughs> feeling supported, yeah. when you're feeling supported like that, it just like, like, I feel like it just helps all together because then like if you feel cared for, if your body is feeling well, if you feel like you're healing well, it's a lot. I feel like we're a lot less likely to struggle with things like postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression, yeah, things like that. That's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing how many things like it can help. Like it's. Uh, yeah. And it's so simple. That's it, the thing. Yeah, I love exactly. That. It's such a simple thing. It's mm -hmm. not like medication or like. Yeah. Or treatment or something it's just something mm -hmm. as simple as you know herbal steaming and it's natural like mm -hmm. not yes nothing, you know yeah mm -hmm. nothing synthetic happens. nothing exactly. yeah exactly um, i love that yeah it's probably I, one of my favorite things i wish i knew this years ago me too girl <laughs> mm -hmm. um, someone yep. said, um does it help with to con when con trying to conceive and does it help with an ovarian cyst this is the same person asking um, so it can help with trying to uh, conceive, like so fertility issues. And so usually with fertility issues, um, sorry about that. So usually with fertility issues, uh, the uterus also needs some support or the menstrual cycle may not be on point. And so what we need to do is support the menstrual cycle and steaming can be a great tool for that. So if we're able to help support the uterus, the menstrual cycle is going great, then there's a lot more, like there's a much better chance for us to be able to conceive naturally and with ease um, rather than if we have like a period that comes once every three months or, you know, something like that, it's a lot difficult, uh, a lot more difficult to conceive. So that's where steaming can really help. It can help us attain a healthy menstrual cycle, which then makes it so much easier to be able to um, become pregnant. And what was the second question? Um, ovarian cysts. Can you help with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, it so basically the, the cysts are in the uterus. And so if there's extra warmth and uh, and like soothing heat coming from the steam, as well as the medicinal benefits from the herbs, then uh, the the uterus is able to just cleanse. So if there's cysts in there, even like fibroids, any of that, like anything that's in there has a the potential to be cleaned out of the uterus. Okay. So it, it does it does have the potential to help with that. Okay. That's great. And then we had another question. Uh, how do you do it? Um, okay, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't get into that yet. Um, can you explain what it is? I, read, I don't know anything about it. Um, we'll try to get try to have a recap on it a bit in a bit. And then does steaming pre birth help in any way? Uh, would we even be able to? Is that even recommended? We wouldn't steam no. when we're pregnant. No. Yeah. So there's a like few prior to getting pregnant. Like if you were steaming, how yeah. would it help your pregnancy or birth? Maybe. Yeah, so basically with steaming, you never want to steam when you're actually on your period, like you're actually bleeding. And then you never want to steam if there's a possibility that you're pregnant or if you are pregnant. So, for example, like if somebody's trying to conceive, they should not be steaming after ovulation. 
Um, and so then that way, just in case you do become pregnant, you're not uh, creating any more like detoxing of the uterus. Um, and so that's something like for people who are trying to conceive, you want to be careful with that. So you just want to make sure that you don't steam. Um, so it can be helpful, you know, steaming at other times in the cycle, like right, um, like right after your period, for example, but you don't want to do it after ovulation. Mm -hmm. And then um, if the person meant like uh, steaming when you're pregnant, you also don't want to do that yeah. so th th those are no-nos yeah how do we steam do so um i mean i have my steam stool like right right <laughs> over there across from me so i'm so glad that you did it because <laughs> it is such a weird like like unless you have a stool it's just the weirdest thing to try and do like it's just like okay, yeah it's hard <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I know it's hard to like figure out how to like kneel above it or prop yourself above it. And so I usually say like for people who are really interested in like, like for me, I had to do it like, at, like certain days throughout the month, like for three months in a row. And so I ended up just getting like that was before I actually started to make the steam stools. But I just had to I ended up getting one because I knew that for me too, I needed to do long steam sessions where it's like 30 minutes. And with that, it's a lot easier to use a stool. Yeah. So um, so basically, it basically what it is, is if you think of like having a cup of herbal tea, um, and then sitting above it, so it's it's basically just like herbs that are warm and steaming. And I think that that's one of the biggest concerns that people have is it being painful or too hot. But it should never, ever be like a situation where you can't sit comfortably because it's too hot. It should never feel like that. It should just feel like you're taking like a nice warm shower or you're just kind of like hovering your hand over a cup of hot tea. Yep. Just just where it's warm, you know, it just yep. feels like a nice warm comfort. Um, and so, so yeah, so basically if you can imagine that. And so there are stools and um, what they call steam saunas where it just kind of looks like, looks like a chair but just has a hole in it similar to what a toilet has. Um, and then below it you could put your pot of um, steaming herbs. And then you just sit above it. You just sit on, on the stool or, or, or whatever. And then you take a blanket and you can cover your, your your waist uh, with a blanket so that the steam stays kind of concentrated um, if that's something that you know you feel like you you would like to do for some people they feel warm from the steam anyways so they don't use a blanket but um, but that's kind of just something to like a way to, to kind of describe if you can imagine you're just kind of sitting above it just yeah. kind of like cozy and wrapped up because yeah. um, a lot of people ask me like are you just sitting there naked or what and it doesn't have to be like that at all and you can I mean you can still stay dressed you could even just have you know like a dress on even and, yeah, and you just, just kind of cover yourself yeah, like that yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yep um how has um like how has the response been to your stools like it's and like shipping it like is it um i'm just curious like could you yeah ship it across so the US or, and it's like i like did a big box um yeah, so so part of my goal with making it, one was I wanted it to be as affordable as I could like possibly have it be. And then another thing that was super important, like when I first was designing it and stuff, the first one that I made was so heavy. I was like, oh my God, I can't nail this. So I had to redesign it. So the one that I have now, it when it's packaged in the box, it weighs about six pounds. Oh, so wow. it's not very heavy at all. Wow. Yeah, it's not very heavy. And that's with like stuffing and the box and everything. Um, so I think the stool itself is about five pounds. I, I usually, um, I, I'm pretty sure that's what I have written. So, so yeah, it's about five pounds. And then um, I luckily found a box that fits like exactly. Um, so it's not very big. The, the stool itself is about like, um, like right here. I mean, you guys, it probably doesn't make a difference. And you don't really know uh, like wh how high this is, I guess. But it's about um, 15 inches high. Um, so it's kind of, I guess it's similar to a toilet, maybe a little shorter than a toilet. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's been interesting because I, I want to make sure that when I package and I mail it out that it's like really like it's safe and stuff. So, um, so that's been interesting, but I've been able to send it a, I, across US, yeah, send it to California so far. And then I also sent one all the way to France. Um, wow. So... <laughs> Yeah, so that France was my farthest one yeah. so far. So, um, but it was like in the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't know how I'll nail this. But, um, but I got the hard part done was, which was figuring out how to actually make the stool. So oh, the mailing part wasn't, wasn't as hard. <laughs> 
so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and it it's so awesome because I actually always wanted to be a woodworker so it's cool to be able to mix it in and I love thinking that women will be able to use it and um, like heal from it and stuff it's really it's special alhamdulillah yeah the hospital used to yeah. give us sit baths oh okay that's good yeah that's that's similar i think but um it's a little it's different from from steaming but that's usually what people yeah, it makes it helps people right? yeah exactly yeah. yeah and i used something similar to that i just kind of like washed myself with an herbal blend and soaked in it kind of so that's similar to a sitz bath um so but it, it's it, it's so nice just being able to use herbs like that yeah and you sell the herbs too right the herbs yeah, yep. So I sell four different herbal blends. So like I mentioned before, that like everyone has different types of, um, they have different types of menstrual cycle challenges and the uterus may need something different for with each one of those. So I have four different herbal blends and um, they each address something different. So there's one that helps women who have like long cycles, who need extra um, circulation. And then there is another one for women who need more of like a gentle, soft blend that just supports and strengthens the uterus. Then I have a cooling blend, which is helpful for people who have like hot flashes, um, people who have vaginal dryness. And then I also have one, and um, it's called Purify, and it's for infections. And that's at, it's really interesting, but that's actually my most uh, popular one. Um, so I, it seems so far as though infections like UTIs yeah. and things like that is something that's a big challenge. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be great to have something like that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I had a question. And <laughs> it's my mind. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I forgot what I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, okay. Hopefully it'll come back up. Yeah. She said salt baths for dis disinfecting. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. They do that at the hospitals. Um, mm -hmm. Can you explain what it is? I don't see any other questions, and I'm trying to think of what I was going to ask you. And completely... <laughs> oh, That's yeah, okay. Gonna, um, so I have tried um, her, um, uh, Sabrina's um, blends, like the herbs, mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm on my third month now, right? Try mm -hmm. Trying it. I haven't really done much steaming because my, my cycle has been a bit, little bit all over the place, right? With, um, mm -hmm. I haven't really done much because it's not been pretty, it's, it's been regular, but like coming early mm -hmm. and stuff. I think that was, yeah. So, but mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like we might be hitting like a, a good, <laughs> like a, our goal, hopefully this month, like yeah, getting a lot better using the, with just mm -hmm. a few steams so i'm i'm amazed by, yeah. by that and also obviously making other changes to my life like yeah exactly um, um mm -hmm. whether it's vitamins or diet and other mm -hmm. things so, um yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see. And that's the interesting, it's so interesting to, like, to see how, like, steaming can help, but then it just, everything works so much better when we're doing other things, too, like you said, like diet and, um, you know, focusing on nutrition, stress, and, and things like that. It really makes a big difference. Um, someone's asking, how long does it take for the cycle to regulate after the starting the steaming? So I think we mentioned in the beginning, it could take, mm -hmm. it took you about three months, um, yeah. three cycles. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, it seems like it's starting to regulate. We're going to see how it goes this month. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's the average. Uh, yeah, it seems like that for some people, like for more um, difficult uh, situations, it can take a long time. Like, for example, fibroids or um, even infertility, things like that. S sometimes it may take a bit longer, like up to like six months. Sometimes it can take quite a bit for some things because if it's more of like an advanced issue, uh, it will take a bit longer. Yeah. Um, but it seems like um, people are able to get pretty good results, especially if they're taking care of themselves while also you know using steaming um i wanted to ask you also have you um have you heard any anyone ever tell you like in your in doing this i'm sure that people will come across this with any any career anything mm -hmm. they can do, any product that they have yeah. but one of my once i mentioned it to a friend of mine and she's like oh my god i just looked it up and it, it's it's like it, it's talk it talks about how harmful it is and how mm -hmm. bad it is mm -hmm. have you heard that? yeah like yeah i've heard some pushback okay. <laughs> 
like, I've heard a little bit of pushback. Like, why would people even say that that's not good for you? Um, so one thing that people get worried about is they say that the uterus is um, like it's an organ that naturally detoxes itself. And it's true, it is where, you know, we have this monthly uterine detox with the period. But the thing is, is that just like other places in our bodies, sometimes our organs or our like body parts do need support. So for example, the colon is also self detoxing. Okay, no problem. So basically, the colon does detox itself, so, but sometimes people get constipated. So you need to support it. You need to help it go through that detox in, in a gentle and natural way. And so um, the same thing happens with uh, the uterus as well. So yes, it is... Um, it, the uterus is naturally designed to be able to detox itself, but it may need some support sometimes. Also, our like the way that um, our society and our culture is designed right now is where we just you know we do so much, we work so hard that we're uh, our uterus and our hormones all kind of like end up needing more support. Um, and so using things like a uterine detox or vaginal steaming can be really helpful. So so that's kind of like one of the things um, that people try to bring up. Another thing too is that they say that the, um, <clears throat> the uh, like the, I forgot, I'm, the, the word is at the tip of my tongue, but basically they say that like steaming kind of sets off like the natural, um, I can't think of the word, but basically like the natural ecology, I oh, guess. I, I don't know. System? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, the pH, like the pH oh, okay. balance and stuff like that. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, it's not, steaming is not like using those like vaginal uh, washes, like those vaginal soaps or like yeah. things like that, because that has chemicals in it. And of course that will then throw the body off, but steaming is natural. And so it's something that is able to um, end up you know, like, uh, helping and, and supporting rather than just kind of like drain, like, like me messing with the whole natural balance yeah. to get all together. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then people, uh, I don't know, some, some other points of view is just like, why would you put your sensitive parts anywhere near steam? And okay, you could think of it that way, but at the same time, the steam is not ever hot to the point where, like it should never ever be like where you can't sit comfortably. It's actually the opposite where it's just so relaxing. Yeah. So it shouldn't, I mean, I think a lot, sometimes when people are not sure about things, like there's just, you know, worries yeah. that come up yeah. that kind of you know, try to push against it. Yeah. And I understand and, and that's fine. But it also has helped so many women for thousands of years. And so that's the part that I trust in. Yeah. Someone says, how far is the steam um, from the uh, how far is the steam from the vagina? And does it the closeness matter? I mean, you just answered that. But I think you said your stool mm -hmm. is 15 cents. Cent, uh, yeah, it's about inches? Yeah, it's about 15 inches high off the ground, and you can have, like, your your pot on the floor. So it would be quite a ways away from you. I've actually seen where people, depending on what setup they have and how big or small the steam stool is, I've seen where people will actually put books underneath, and so then that way the steam can be closer. Yeah. Um, and, and with that, you would just make sure that it's cooled down a bit before you sit down on it. So it just, you know, it, it depends according to, like, your setup. But you just want to make sure that like the rim of the pot isn't anywhere near like you want to make sure you have quite a few inches between yourself and yeah. like the yeah. the rim of the pot obviously so it's just yeah. kind of like using your um like just you know what makes sense and and uh, just being careful for yourself in it but when you set it up in a way that is safe and you know you're not gonna like um be burned or anything and you know that you've checked the steam and you kind of like hover above it and make sure it's not too hot before sitting mm -hmm. it ends up being something that that's it that's really so really wonderful thing. it is yeah yeah um there's another mm -hmm. question on my body right now it is all over the place after i quit birth control what do you suggest so i had a similar experience oh, after stopping i'm so sorry for poor all thing no 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 afra go 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 it's okay i'm just gonna answer the question <laughs> okay. no problem so um, basically, so I had a similar experience as, as the person who's asking. So when I stopped taking the pill, I actually um, 
had had it where my body just needed to detox from the pill um and i had like a really odd situation with the pill anyway so i just decided to stop taking it and then it seemed like my cycle just got really messed up and um it seemed like my body needed to be able to detox from the pill so what i did was i started to make sure that i was eating a bit better i also started to do a juice fast so i helped my body detox through juicing and then i also started to take herbs just to kind of help regulate my body from that but if there are toxins in the body detoxing is usually what can be really helpful um so my favorite way one of my favorite ways to detox is through juicing mm. um and i feel like steaming could help a lot with that too because it's kind of helping to reset and and um you know like again it's a as a form of detox too yeah i definitely agree with the juicing as well like i just mm -hmm. day 4 uh, of the yeah doing my celery detox and i can already yeah. pretty feel a change physically and yeah uh, yeah i think mm -hmm. that it definitely makes um changes someone mm -hmm. asked would it help people with that regularly get utis yeah you have a you said you have a blend mm -hmm. that's for yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um one article calls steaming useless but that's not evident by all the testimonials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I see yeah. any other questions. Yeah, and you mentioned that you um I saw on your page as well that you're doing a um a mm -hmm. a course or um you have Yeah, class. so Yeah, so I'm doing I'm offering a free class um on Monday actually. Oh. So almost a week away, but it's basically going to be about it's called Ayurveda, a beautiful guide to effective self-care. So I'm just going to be sharing about how the science of Ayurveda can um really support us with our self-care um like methods that we that we choose because of the fact that it focuses on um body types. So with that you can figure out how to take care of yourself through what your body is like and what your body needs. So we're going to just kind of dive into that and talk a bit about Ayurveda and um the science that um has been practiced for like 5000 years. So I'm excited to share that and it's a free class, so I just wanted it to be open to everyone and anyone who is interested in learning more about Ayurveda. So if anyone's interested in that, uh you can just go to my profile and click on the link in my bio and then the first thing that pops up there is um the registration link to so just register and then for people who can't attend the actual live class I'm sending out the recording so you'll be able to watch it even if you're not able to make it at the time so if anyone's interested in that please do yeah I haven't yeah. I haven't had a chance to register but I will um and so it says um Huda says um it's a very interesting and sensitive topic to discuss it is i know nobody really mm -hmm. it's only like i've seen sabrina talk about uh, about it a lot on her page <laughs> um thank you for coming out and bringing up such an important cuz i mean it is such an important topic and the reason i wanted to bring it up was because i saw the connection with like postpartum mm -hmm. and healing and mm -hmm. how my period was affecting my day-to-day -day lifestyle you know it wasn't just mm -hmm. a seven day thing it was affecting yeah. my whole it started affecting my whole month you know like mm -hmm. my the mm -hmm. horm, like hormonal like pms mm -hmm. mood swings just and just also my mm -hmm. body fatigue and and just everything yeah i'm really yeah. excited to mm -hmm. see like how it's going to change um my life mm -hmm. inshallah and make it better yeah. so that i i'm not like suffering from pms or like dreading mm -hmm. that one week the whole month you know mm -hmm. it, it, exactly like, many years ago i would it wouldn't really affect me until it actually happened you know but mm -hmm. um you know after yeah. post birth i think post like three kids i feel like it's just got yeah. worse and worse and so i was like okay yeah. it's enough here's sabrina yep exactly <laughs> yeah, sabrina, <laughs> thank um, you thank yeah. you so much afra i'm so also, glad that we were able to come on here alhamdulillah yeah and you also do coaching right like you also like, mm -hmm. help, yep. like you can also do consultations to help women so like if people want to buy your yep. lens and don't know what to do you can also like Mhm. Mm um, yep. Help them with um like information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I helped uh, to create a steam plan so for people who don't know like how often they should steam, things like that, we're able to sit together and create a plan to where we're supporting you in your goal of what you want your cycle to be like. Yeah. Okay. 
That's amazing. Yeah, so I'm available for that. I'm so glad yeah, you're doing what you're doing. It's it's um, oh, thank you so much. So you know, much if, if someone told me this is what I'm doing, this is what I would be doing, like just even just like a few years ago, I would be like, what? you are so crazy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. Um, and inshallah, Sipri has an amazing um, in-depth post about um, uh, vaginal steaming and how it can, basically everything we've talked about. Um, and I was supposed to have it up by tonight. <laughs> mom, mom, it's okay. Way, but um, I will, yeah, I will it's okay. announce when the post goes up. And then Sabrina will also um, announce when yeah. the, and provide the link as well for that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, thank yeah. I'm so excited much. for you to have it on your blog. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm excited to have that information up as well because it's so much needed, and I'm sure we can have mm -hmm. more discussions on this, um, you know, in the future. Exactly. Well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Inshallah. So okay. Much, uh, Sabrina, and thank you, everyone. For thank having, you, Afra. Any questions? Like, yes. For thank you so much, guys. You can um, message Sabrina or myself, um, and I can mm -hmm. forward the question to her and follow her. She has such mm -hmm. important information that will help us. You know, even if you're no, you don't have babies. You know, we all have. Yeah. Um, you know, our monthly cycles, so it is. Mm -hmm. You know, really helpful um, to have. But yeah. Um, mm. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Afra. Okay. Kiss your babies for us. <laughs> all right. Take care. Salam alaikum. <laughs> yeah, poor things. Right. Okay. Take care. Bye. Salam alaikum.